Hi, family. It is Wednesday morning, and this is the final teaching in our series on Psalm 23. Uh, it's the happy ending, if you will. Um, the final verse of Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Comforting words, amazing words for us to live by. And as we have learned along this journey, Psalm 23 is not for funerals only. Uh, it's for life, and it's for our lives, and it's to meant to guide our lives. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's take the first part of that first. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I want you to think of that in two senses. Uh, the first sense is goodness and mercy. Imagine goodness and mercy um, being the names of two uh, hunting dogs that pursue us and barking along the way. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's how some poet and uh, author described it years ago. But it's an apt... Uh, description of what the author is, is saying. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me, meaning uh, God's mercy and God's goodness will follow me all my days. And if we look back on our lives, over our lives, and the faithfulness of God to pull us out of darkness or pull us out of um, disease or pull us out of scenarios that would do us great harm, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Beautiful words and comforting words for us to live by. The hounds of heaven, goodness and mercy following us all the days of our lives. Well, there's another sense in which we need to understand this passage, given the metaphor of shepherd and sheep. Goodness and mercy will follow me when sheep would go up to a mountaintop. And in fact, this is where the setting would be at the final passage here. Because God prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies from verse 5. That flat top or that plateau would be on the mountaintop, would be in the high place. And it, the sun would, would bake down on, on the sheep and it would be a place of, of rest and a place of peace and a place of safety. But it would be on the mountaintop. And so we've talked about the valley, that God, as our shepherd, leads us through the valley. And he leads us all the, ultimately up to the mountaintop, where we have that mountaintop experience with him. But surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. As I mentioned, I was reading a book on, um, on shepherding uh, from a, a shepherd, a modern-day uh, tale of him caring for sheep. And, and what this author was saying was that Sheep, by their nature, often will leave behind a wonderful, beautiful field because they'll eat the, you know, even the weeds that uh, no one would even uh, care for. But they would leave the field in, in a beautiful condition once they were done with that field. And so goodness and mercy following that flock as they leave that area to go on to the next spot. In our own lives understanding the nature of God when God blesses us and, and when he when he grants us his presence or when he grants us strength or wisdom or discernment, um, when he grants us some beautiful blessing, uh, that we can then go and bless someone else. The path of the Christian, the path of the pilgrim seeking to follow God should result in the fact that we have left behind this beautiful landscape behind us that our shepherd has provided us wisdom and peace and goodness that we can then bless other people with. And we're asking us as a church to, to bless other people in this season. And I hope that you, you are finding uh, those people that just need an encouragement or need help or need a phone call or need to have some face-to-face -face time on Zoom or whatever application you use on your computer. As we're... Uh, sheltered here in our homes, I, my prayer is that we use this time in a redemptive way, that we can leave behind uh, a path of goodness and a path of mercy in our own lives. So that's the first 
truth. And that I would say is a, it's a truth about um, perspective, where we have a perspective that goodness and mercy should be our perspective, where goodness and mercy should be the thing that we focus on, that God has provided for us, and that we're to leave behind for other people uh, to see and to witness. Perspective. A lot of things about perspective are so important right now because I think really largely our, we don't have any perspective. I mean, our perspective is fear right now. I was looking at some of the numbers for this virus and thinking, it sounds like everybody's dying or like the whole world's coming to an end. And just looking at the counties around us. So we're in Kent County and, and if you look at Ottawa County and uh, Barry County, um, Allegan County, Ionia County, there's 1.1 million people. In that 1.1 million people, that people group, there's 102 cases. Guess how many deaths there are? One. It's about a 1.7% death rate, mortality rate. And so 98.3 of all people are are getting over this, this virus. And it's a huge praise. We know that any, every death is, in, is an important, um, it's important to God, it's important to every one of us. But if we listen to the news media and we get spun out of control with the fear mongering and our world is coming to an end, you know, it's my hope and it's yours too that we can get back to life as normal. For, for a sheep, living in the presence of a shepherd, that sheep would be constantly aware of the perspective, not only of being on the mountaintop where God has prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies, that we can have a place of rest, that we can have a place of solitude, that we can have a, a place of sanctuary, if you will, that we can have a place of, of peace in the midst of even enemies maybe hiding behind the bushes. But we can be at, at peace. It's because we have the perspective of not only being on the mountaintop with our Savior, but also being with our Savior, being with the shepherd. And so perspective is, is paramount in this day and age. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you on your perspective right now. Are you focusing on, on the fear or are you focusing on the shepherd? And so perspective is the first thing. The second thing is presence. Presence is so important, the presence of God as our shepherd. When we think of the second part of Psalm 23, verse 6, the first part, surely goodness and mercy will be, um, will pursue me, or will follow me all the days of my life. But then the second part, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, what a comfort that is to realize that uh, we get to dwell with our Savior forever. But in Jewish uh, history and Hebrew thought, that is speaking about present day. It, it's saying um, the fact that in the reality of, um, of their day and age, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So I'm talking about my life right now on earth. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, how many of us can't wait to gather again, again uh, together as a people and sing the praises of our God together? There's something that happens corporately when we gather together to, to worship and to hear teaching and to grow in our faith. And, and it's so important to the life of all of us to do that. And one day we'll do that again, again soon. But until that time, what the psalmist is talking about is, um, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever, meaning the presence of the shepherd makes all the difference. And as we talked about, the shepherd is the one who leads us beside quiet waters and, and leads us to find pasture land and, and, and helps us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and lead us to the mountaintop where we're on the flat plain and we get this perspective of the shepherd leading us to the, to the high point. And isn't that cool that our church is even 
name that. The flat land where there's peace and there's safety. The, uh, the high point of the mo mountaintop. The shepherd is the one and the presence of the shepherd is the one who calms us. And the psalmist, King David, is saying, I, I want to dwell with God forever, all my days. Meaning, like, I'm happy. Like, I've found the one I want to dwell with. And as a sheep, thinking about the shepherd, it's like the sheep and all the sheep together are saying, okay, I'm good. Like, I'm not looking for someone else to lead me. I've got my shepherd. And to find satisfaction in the shepherd and to find a sense of joy in the shepherd. One thing we've all been given by having time uh, in our homes is, is, is time. I mean, it's, it's really an involuntary Sabbath in many ways of rest. And my prayer is that we focus on the presence of the shepherd and we understand the fact that when the presence of the shepherd is fully realized in our own lives, wherever we are, and the time, the extra time that we have embracing the shepherd and understanding that the shepherd would choose to be with us and that we as sheep can say, I choose to be with that shepherd all the days of my life. I would literally welcome dwelling with my shepherd is what the passage is saying. My prayer is that for all of us, we understand that the presence of the shepherd makes all the difference through this whole series. In fact, in John 10, when he talks about uh, my sheep know me, uh, they, they know my voice, I know them, they follow me. There's a passage right before that in a verse that until this, this teaching, I've never really uh, grasped maybe fully, but this is the passage. So this is John 10, uh, verse 7. He says, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them, thankfully. Verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now, it hit me with the new sense of reality connecting to verse 6 of Psalm 23, the fact that he's saying our shepherd will lead us into pasture land, into pleasant places. I'm the door. I, I will let you in, and I will let you experience the beauty of the pasture land that I'm preparing for you. Now, the reality is in our lives, this is good when, when life is going well, but right now our lives aren't going well. We're in a period of, of a valley. The presence of the shepherd makes all the difference knowing that the shepherd is with us in that valley we know that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life even romans 8 28 um, with the truth that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes i know god will bring good things out of this i know he will i know he will if you take it seriously if you, if you uh, focus, in, as the last teaching talked about, on the who and not the when, or the what and not the why. If we allow our spirits to be centered on, on the nature of the, having good perspective that God is leading us to the mountaintop, that right now might be in the valley, but the mountaintop is coming, and also having a sense of his presence with us, that because he is with us, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I found my place. This is my place. These are my people. This is my flock. You know, I think a lot of times we don't have uh, maybe the nature of great pride in our faith as much as we should. And we know that uh, pride goes before the fall and pride often is... Um, is viewed in a, in a negative way. We know it is a lead to, to sin. But I'm talking about the positive sense of, of satisfaction or, or joy we find in being with the shepherd and being with the people of God. We have a great privilege. It's an honor. Uh, we don't deserve any of it. <laughs> and yet God has bestowed upon us mercy and strength and goodness and love and the grace of God that only comes through Jesus on the cross. You know, the reality is in our lives, friends, 
the sheep in the story of the gospel ultimately becomes the shepherd and leads us. The Lamb of God who was slain becomes the King of all the world to lead us into all truth, the shepherd of our souls. Revelation chapter 7 has a poignant expression of that very truth. Revelation 7 talks about the end of all time, the end of all things, when we're finally with God. And the revelation of, of St. John, starting in verse 9, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude, so that no one could number, every nation, all tribes, peoples, languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their face before the throne and they worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed, clothed in white robes and from where have they come? I said to him, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Did you hear that word? Presence. He who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor the scorching heat. For the lamb is in the midst of the throne and will be their shepherd. And when he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Take great comfort in that, my friends. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The lamb is in the midst of the throne, and he will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. Our shepherd has led us to springs of living water. Our shepherd has led us to great pasture land. Our shepherd has led us to the mountaintop where we can find a place of rest, a place of peace, where he protects us from our enemies, even in the midst of, we know our enemies are out there. But our shepherd cares for us and leads us and protects us. All the details of a shepherd caring for his sheep is our shepherd to us. Take great joy in these truths, friends, and live in the reality of the shepherd's presence and have the perspective that God would want for us to have focusing on him and not the world around us. I pray you be encouraged by this. God's people, there's no better time to be God's people than to focus on the needs of people all around us. And my prayer is that you are making a difference, trying to encourage other people, sending cards and, and calling people around you to try to encourage them, knowing the reality of what the shepherd does for us now we do it for other people. That's my hope, that we be the church in the season where the church is desperately needed in these times. May God bless you and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you as you have the perspective of looking to your Savior, knowing that you live in his presence. Amen. Be at peace.